Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 266. I'm your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com, and we're honored to have with us the award-winning and acclaimed author of Redeemed and Rectified, Pollyanna Porter. Thank you, Barney, for having me. This is great. Yes, Pollyanna, we had we had a little, but before we went live, we had a little trouble with uh, a little bit of the mic settings, but I think we're good. I think we're good to go, huh? I hope so. I feel confident somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, as what we call a voluntary Vermonter. Um, you're not from here, but you've moved here, and now you're you you were also a, a teacher for thirty odd years or so, right? That that's correct. I um, came to Vermont in 1993 and so 30 years i've been here and out of those 30 years i've taught middle school for 27. so you so now you you recently retired and now you've already have two books you've been putting out a 300 plus page book for the last two years you put one out in 2021 called Rectified, and now you just came out with run recently called Redeemed in 2022. That's correct. I wow. um, I retired, but uh, I'll be honest with you, Barney, up to getting close to retirement, I kept on saying, when I retire, I'm finally going to write that book. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, the day after Thanksgiving of my last year teaching, my husband went somewhere, I don't know where, and the house was empty and I thought, oh, I'm gonna start now. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, for six weeks, I got up at four in the morning and w w I started writing and I didn't stop. I wrote 160 pages in about 32 days. Wow. My husband had no idea I was getting up that early. I just began to write. And so then COVID hit and uh, I had about 160 pages. Uh, teachers were sent home, students were sent home. About two to three weeks, we were all getting our online classes set up and I was in the middle school. Um, and I, I had more time to write because the day wasn't as long as what it had been when I we were actually in school. And mm. I just really wrote and wrote and wrote. And then I sent it off to a couple of editors online. Right. And yeah. so because you wrote your first book, Rectified, you mentioned in a previous interview that this one came kind of seemed to have come from the gut where your second book seemed to have you had to do more research on that one. Do you Absolutely. want to talk first? Do you want to first talk a little bit to about to the uh, the listeners and the viewers out there about what um, rectified is about? Sure. So Barney, like um, we had, or, you know, you mentioned, I uh, taught for many years, and mm. oh boy, I was often uh, one of a few people on a team where um, we weren't so content academically minded, we were more whole child health wise. Mm, um, I right. worked with the guidance counselor, those their school counselors. Now I worked with the principal, the assistant principal, social workers, DCF, HCRS. I was a life skills teacher, which was a special ed teacher, but um, I often dealt with the toughest kids. And I, I want to make that clear. They weren't the toughest acting always, but they were from the toughest situations. Hmm. And so I would say about 10, 15 years ago, I started to write in my head a book. Um, and I would think about that book. I walk my dog, I walk in the woods, I walk around the block. And that book started to take shape and it was rectified. And hmm. so as I got closer to retirement, I thought, I've got the story already. I know it. I need to write it. And so um, I actually wrote Rectified from the view of a teacher who, um, oh, this is kind of tough, but she is not the 
teacher of the boy who is being abused in the story and it's sexual abuse and it's gritty but it's not mm. i mean it was done well my editor was extremely good and 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 helped me with this i also had a um therapist who read all my parts on any reference to the sexual abuse um, she gave me wonderful um, input. But anyway, I wrote about the story about a special ed student, a teenager, who is sexually abused by a very wealthy, powerful, prominent man in this small Vermont ski town. Mm -hmm. And from there, the story just really uh, mushrooms out into how she deals with it and how she decides that getting help for the boy is well worth what may come to her own family. And mm -hmm. what happens is, um, Bar Barney, is she basically, like her own life with her husband and her own high school son, on fire to save this family of, of boys that have had it extremely difficult. And the book Rectified is written in two, or it, it's written with every other chapter is past present. So you okay. begin with a present chapter where she is now, and then she takes you back to the beginning of discovering about mm. this abuse. But I want to, um, I don't want to give too much away, but, but I want to say this. The main character is Sarah, and Sarah is a 42-year-old teacher. She gives up everything to help this family. And then the present is her new life because of the ramifications of what she, the length she goes to help this, this boy. There's a lot at stake, and she right. decides to go for it because to do otherwise would be to turn her back on a, a child, even though he's you know, almost 18, but he's a special ed student and um, it wasn't consensual. And she right. notes that. Now, as you say, you'd, you'd have it take place in a fictional town. Was that being deliberate, not having it take place in like a real town? Well, I based it on Ludlow, Vermont, because I'd lived there, loved Ludlow. Still, you know, I'm I'm 16 miles down the road from Ludlow, where I live now. I love Ludlow, the restaurants, the mountain. I'm not a skier, but um, <laughs> I do love it. And I I wanted to write it because I wanted the setting to be one of every small town, prosperous small town in America. And that in every town there could be lurking a really vile person. And I, I, mm. I wanted it to be a cautionary tale, but one where um, it's, it's realistic. It happens. Um, I did have to, I wrote it from the gut. You're right. I, I've had to deal with kids that have been abused in my teaching profession in Alaska. When I taught in Alaska, I had a couple of cases where, you know, we had to report, um, suspected abuse. We never did any of the, um, investigation that wasn't our role, but what our role was is to, um, bring it to the authorities. Um, so anyway, rectified was from the gut with a lot of help from my editor sensitive i call it a gritty novel um and yet a poignant and important one to tell mm. and barney i drew from i took from the sandusky case in penn state i took um i took uh transcripts from um epstein's accounts you know the uh, i i drew from that i looked at grand juries what what's their role um i personally um have gone through teacher professional development where you know trauma um all the ramifications of trauma based um and ACE, you know, the uh, the way kids are brought up and it's um, adverse childhood effects. Um, so I blend the, all that information and experience into the novel and, and it mm. worked out well. I, it's a great story. It's uh, right. 
uh, one where a lot of people replied, I couldn't put it down. I didn't know where it was going and I couldn't put it down. So. So there's a level of, you say like advocacy in this, because also at the back of the book, you also have a list of, you know, references and resources that people could actually utilize as well. Correct. Yes. I ended the book um, with a page on if you suspect um, sexual abuse in the state of Vermont, these, these are the examples and mm -hmm. um, this is the place to go. I felt it was important because um, I think that a lot of people in all walks of, of professions, um, from the uh, teacher, of course, to the shop owner, to possibly the, um, you know, the neighbor, we all might have ideas. And this is a story about where the woman, it wasn't a student, but she witnessed something that didn't sit well with her. It didn't sit well. And she was a teacher, so her love of children, but he was older and she just thought, what if what I witnessed wasn't consensual? And I think sometimes we all, we all may see something, Barn, you know, it could be coming out of the grocery store and watch, walking by a car and seeing two people in a car and something's not quite right. Or I, I don't know how to explain it, but um, if we don't, if we don't, if we have a gut feeling that something's not quite right, this is what Sarah, the main character acted upon. And guess what? It saved a family and she lost everything, but it saved a family. Part, part of that, would you say this is more of like when you, this being your first book, this was a almost like a passion project of yours? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I have to tell you, Barney, that when I finally wrote what I thought was enough and the whole book, I sent it to two editors online. Um, one of them I, I knew, but I sent it off and they both came back and said, there's some promise here. So you've got a story. And I was just thrilled. Here I was 63, about to retire. And I'll tell you, I walked those middle school halls like I was on cloud nine. I'd wanted to write my whole life. I was finally getting some, a stamp of, you can write, this is a good story. And it was then that I told my husband, you know, all those mornings I've been getting up and you've wondered why, why, well, I've written a book. And he was like, what? So it, I wrote from the heart. Yes. And, um, and then my edit, the editor I went with came back with, okay, let's begin. You've got a lot of work and oh my God, 12 pages of her notes. And I thought she, this is incredible what she's given me to go from. And I retired and I took it just like a tea, just like a student assignment. I sat down and went through every page of what she suggested. And um, I remember I loved to golf and I was out on the golf course in um, its Crown Point. It's a wonderful course. It's a public course right in Springfield. And I was with three of my girlfriends. I hadn't told anyone but my husband that I'd written a book. <laughs> And I sent in and I got an email and it said, my editor said, I'm paraphrasing, this is the most significant rewrite I've ever had a client of mine do. Wow. And I, I just remember I was just on cloud nine. By then I might've been 64, I don't know, but I, so that's how that first book came about. And, and so, so talk to us because you did this, you kind of filled in your, your bucket list, your, your passion project of writing a book. So, but you were not, you were not finished. What made you decide to write a second book? So it was funny because when I, you know, there's time where you have to, like I self-published. So I had a graphic artist, wonderful, Words by Jen. She's out of Bradford, Connecticut. She took my book and she was building my book. She calls it, mm. um, you know, I'm a book builder. And so she, so I had some time and I thought, I'm going to write that second book I've thought about. 
And I had that story. Um, I knew it wasn't as 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 gritty or as um, t- t- passionate as Rectified was about the teacher with the students. But I thought, you know, she says I can write. My editor said I could write. I'm just going to try this. And so that one, I started out and I really started to, I knew what I wanted and I needed to really research. And right. so I spent a good, it took me longer. I spent three, four months researching and interviewing, interviewing some people and it, and it worked out really well. And then that's the book that I just was given an honorable um, mention through the Eric Hoffer book award. So do you want to talk to us for, for our listeners and viewers out there, what the, basically what the synopsis is of Redeemed? Sure. My second book, Redeemed, came out last November. And the, the, um, the synopsis is this. It's about, again, it's, it takes place in a fictitious, the same fictitious town as Rectified called Langdon, Vermont. And again, I, I um, mirrored it after Ludlow, Vermont. If anyone knows 100 North, as you leave Ludlow, you go by gorgeous lakes and they are nestled in on the right three different lakes one after the other and it's not it's not big beautiful lake houses these are old cottages that parents and people have had for years and it's gone from one generation to the next and um so Mm. Anyway, I started, I knew my book was going to take place with a man saving a small 10-year-old boy on one of the lakes. And I, and I used to sit at this one boat launch. And so I, I knew I wanted to write about a man saving a child and then falling in love with the child's mother. But he's not hmm. a nice man. <laughs> and he is the redeem he's the redeemer he goes from being a rather self-serving um very uh savvy new york art broker and for the background material on that on i don't know new york city i don't know the world of art um i read and read and i also have a cousin who is a well-regarded artist in New York. He's been there for years. His name is Matthew Blackwell. And I called my cousin and he just talked to me for hours and I took notes and he was an art handler for years. Um, Those are the guys that take wonderful priceless art from one gallery to the next or a museum to the next. They they call them the bomb squad because what mm. they're tra- what they're transporting is just wonderful. Contem- he was in contemporary art, and so he fleshed out a lot of the background information on artists and brokers. And so I I used his background knowledge. I also love World War II, and I knew about the monuments men. And so I wanted to weave a mystery about this art broker who is not such a nice guy, falls in love with a woman from Vermont. He saves her son. She Mm -hmm. rebuffs him, wants nothing to do with him. And then he spends the next 11 years reviewing his life and, and decides that going back to Vermont where his grandparents raised him might be the best thing for him. And so it's a love story, but it's also a mystery because he discovers on his farm that his grandfather, a very nondescript old man, has actually played a key role in returning stolen art that Hmm. from from the Jews over in Europe that were that was sold the art was sold and ended up in the United States and all that was I had to document a lot or excuse me I had to um, 
research a lot and find documentation of Jewish art and artifacts that are still that have been found and are still listed on web pages, websites for who owns this. This could be your family's religious artifacts. And and so you mentioned too, this also takes place in this also takes place in Langdon, Vermont as well. It it does take place in Langdon. The farm that the actual art broker, his mate, the the man who saves the boy, is in right. Plymouth. Which, if you know the area, Barney, Plymouth is all of six miles north of of Ludlow. Ludlow. It's more yeah. rural. Um, so I it's it's Plym it's uh, Calvin Coolidge, uh, his historical um, homestead. It's a very pretty area of Vermont, and the setting of the farm where he returns is in Plymouth, but the woman whose child he saves is uh, another family that lives in Langdon, Vermont. So does this take place in the same literal universe as Rectified as well? Rectified, the time frame for Rectified is 2017, 2018. Okay. The time frame for Redeemed begins one morning in 1999 okay. and ends in 2021. Just one page bringing the reader up to date but it, the gut of the story takes place in 2010. Okay. All right. Does that Will there be, sense? so is there any similar scenes or is there anything that people might, is there any connection between the two books at all? Um, so I didn't know this, but um, I had, my editor said, oh, Easter eggs. Yeah. And so I was like, what are you talking about, Rachel? And she, <laughs> All right. That's another that's another term you need to know is when you uh, put something in one book that is a reference to another story, that's an Easter right. egg. And what I did is in my rectified, it's the story of the woman and she has a son and a husband and a best friend and in my story of redeemed i have a scene where the main characters of rectified are not 2017 they're seven years younger and they meet a couple of the characters from redeemed <laughs> and it's just on the street the boy the it's just on the street and it's a simple a chain falls off a bike and the main character from Redeemed gets up and walks over and he's at, they're outside at a, a deli. Um, and he starts to help the boy put on the chain of his bike. And then they all meet and they introduce themselves. And it's just a casual small town happens. Every, every small town, oh, I know her or we, we may have met before. Oh, right. And it's as simple as that. And um, right. so I like that. I like that. And um, I did do that. <laughs> and, and so this being your second book, you couldn't hide this, like your first book where you basically made yeah. it a surprise that you wrote a book. So how how did the support change with your friends and family as you're writing your second book? Oh, that's a great question. Well, first off, I didn't have to get up so early. I was retired <laughs> and I was literally writing a book. So uh, my, I do have to say that one of the, my, my Rectified was so well received by friends and family. And it was, it was their response that spurred me on. And, and, and really besides my editor, it was the reception I got from Rectified that put the wings, uh, the wind beneath my wings to write the second one. So I was very open. I said, yeah, I've got another one. It's very different. And the main character is a man. I don't know if I'm going to get it right. I don't know, but I'm doing it. And it took me longer. And when I sent it to the same editor, I was going to use everything, the editor and the graphic artist, the book builder. I was not changing a thing. Mm. They 
both said, wow, you stepped up your game. Yeah. And, and so I, the support was wonderful. I could, op I could openly write, um, you know, I was evasive with some people because I, I didn't know how much, how long it would take. But when I finished it, wrote my, my final draft to my second book, I posted not the draft, but I posted my laptop out in my patio and I said, second book done, you know, Facebook, like I said, my generation loves Facebook and I got a great, great deal of um, positive, like, can't wait, can't wait. And, and what was interesting, Barney, do you know, you know, Joe Citro, Joseph yeah. Citro. Yeah. So I have a funny story to tell because he reviewed my second book. So Joseph Citro, I had never met him, um, but a friend of mine, he replied to her Facebook comment one night. I need, I need to get someone to read my second book because I need, inf I need a jacket cover endorsement. And so I'm going to reach out to him. And so I sent him a Facebook message and I said, uh, you don't know me, but we have a mutual friend and I've written a book and I, could you ever read it and review it? And, uh, you know, thank you. And he wrote back quickly and said, yeah, you know what? I found out in my old age that you can write a bad book just as easily as a good book. So thank you, but no, thank you. Well, I wasn't going to take that, Barney. <laughs> so I went back and forth and I said, oh, come on. I'm an old retired school teacher. You love school teachers. I've seen your Facebook. You've made reference to them. Um, come on, do an old, old lady a favor and just, just read the first 20 pages. And if you don't like it, that's it. Don't, you know, I, I have no qualms. And he said, he lives about 12, may, maybe about 20 miles away, but I mailed him my manuscript and I was maybe, oh, I want to say four days later, I looked and I got a message from Joseph Citro and it said, all it said was 224. And I stopped and I said, oh my God, is this like a writer's code for something is it like easter egg is it like you know the term manuscript right. what is it and i sent back just a question mark and his response was polly i'm on page 224 i can't put it down wow oh my god i you know i barney i was like um it, it was one of the greatest writing moments because i thought here's a vermont writer who i had to practically i did i didn't practically i begged him to read it right. and four days later it's that you know 224 right so i i just really uh adored joseph citro and i want that out there <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned though uh before you we went live you're talking about that you might be working on a third book with the same alliterative alliterative design of having it start with the letter r as well so I, I, I have had people, you know, it's funny. It's now I kind of feel like all those, um, those binging shows that I'm sucked into. I'm an outlander fan. Ozark. Um, oh, breaking bad. I mean, I went through them all and breaking bad. I did like after I retired and I was watching breaking bad binging. I took it to heart. I did it seriously, like at 10 in the morning and it was pretty bad. But anyway, so I feel like my read, the two books I've had, they've like devoured them and then they, they loved it. When's the next one? I'm like, will you give me a minute? <laughs> like all those, all those, um, you know, TV shows, like the minute we're done, we want more. When's the next season? Right. Oh my gosh, we've got to wait a year. So uh, I do have a third book. It's um, it will be an R word, rectify, redeem, and I think this third one is definitely an R. Um, I have a great outline. I have thought about this, um, this book, this storyline, and it'll take place in Langdon, Vermont. And I'll have a couple of Easter eggs. I can't not small towns. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody lives in a small town and doesn't have maybe two degrees of separation um, right. in a small town. So do I think it'll come out as fast as you noted, you know, um, in the beginning of, of your podcast? I'm not 
I'm not going too fast on it. I spring is here. I golf. I love to golf. And I've got a seven month old granddaughter and a two year old grandson and a nine year old grandson and a 12 year old granddaughter. Right. So I love to see them in their sports and, and visit. And so we'll see, but right. come winter, I'll be right by the fireplace and now I'll, I'll hit it hard. Right. There you go. Yeah. 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 Is it, is, it, is, is your third book called Retired? Is that what the third one is called? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rectified and Redeemed have a second line. The old yeah. retired lady again or something. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it, it, I think it's, no, it's not going to be retired, but um, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great story. And, and you know how um, new all this writing is to me. The Eric Hoffer Book Awards gave me a uh, no, uh, honorable mention under commercial fiction. I had to look up commercial fiction just to make mm -hmm. sure I had a clear understanding of what it was. So both novels are, are commercial fiction, um, a broad base appeal. Right. And I hope the third book can, can rise to the occasion. For those that are interested in learning more about your writing, Pollyanna, where's the best place could they go to? Um, I have a web uh, website. It is www.pollyannaporter.com. Both books, present books, are there. Pollyanna, this has been great. You, you're going to have to come back on the show and talk about your third book then when it comes out. Barney, if you invite me, I'll be there. I uh, love to talk about, you know, like anybody, your, your accomplishments. And Barney, all I want to say and leave with, as I did with a couple of high school kids who, you know, I taught middle school is just if you want to write, don't wait. I waited right. all my life. Don't wait. I, I remember being a senior in high school in Lyons, New York, and giving my senior language arts, they called it English, and teacher 50 pages. And she said, what's this? And I said, the start of my story. And you know what? That was the end. I never touched right. writing again. I, I was eight, 17. And so don't wait. Do it. Get up at four in the morning. Let the juices flow. You'll love it. Right. It's just Perfect. don't wait. Do it. Good. Good advice. All right. Thank you very much, Pauliana. So let me get going. So, what, so then what I'll do, Pollyanna, is I will do the intro and okay. we will, yeah, we'll run. Is that, does that clock work behind you? Yes. It's not okay. A, it's just right. a replica. Looks fancy. Look at that. Ain't, it's not, yeah. believe me. I'm going to have, <laughs> all right, you start and then I'll, we'll just make the best of this and believe me. Oh, it'll so. be the, it'll be the best. All right. All right. Okay, Here we go, Barbie. Pollyanna. All right. All right. 